Welcome back. We talked about relative age. This compared to that is older or younger. We talked about geologic age, putting things in a particular kind of time frame. And then we have absolute age, kind of putting more of a precise number on the ages of rocks or fossils. Just to give you a reference of how old the Earth is, let me give you an analogy. So imagine every second that ticks by is one year. Four years, five years, six years, seven years, eight years, nine years, ten years, right? So every year that ticks by is one second, all right? So, so far, so good. So, so one year is one second. A hundred years would be a hundred seconds. That's a minute and 40 seconds. A thousand years would be 16 minutes and 40 seconds. 10,000 years, two hours, 47 minutes. 100,000 years, that's a day and four hours, 28 hours. 300,000 years, that's how long ago modern Homo sapiens, that's the species that you and I are, uh, evolved. So 300,000 years would be 3 days and 11 hours. A million years would be 11.5 days. Oops, wrong button. A billion years would be 31.7 years. Therefore, 4.54 billion, or 4,543,000,000 million years, that's the age of the Earth, would be 144 years years if one year is one second so our lives let's say we live to be a hundred years old would be a minute and 40 seconds the earth is already 144 years old in this term turn let me show you earth's old earth's old let me give you a visual representation let me give you a little bit of visual re representation here's ten thousand dollars if these are a hundred dollar bills this is ten thousand dollars how much do you think this is? And that's a million dollars. How much do you think this is? That's a billion dollars. You can see how big of a difference. Even 10,000 years is nothing compared to a billion years. So imagine Earth is 4.5 billion years old. Imagine there was 4.5 billion dollars sitting there. You would hardly notice if 10,000 years was gone. 10,000 years is just a, a blink of an eye. Also, when someone says a millionaire versus a billionaire, that's what they're talking about. Millionaire, billionaire. So the Earth's an old place. We don't have context. We can't wrap our brain around how much 4.5 billion years is. It's a lot. It's a lot. If all of Earth's time, that geologic time scale, was compressed into one big tower, I know this is hard to see. Let me zoom in on kind of the bottom of it here. So the solar system uh, and the uh, Earth formed about 4.54 billion years ago. Um, Single-celled life, so the Proterozoic, up and through here. So this is where we're starting to get multicellular life uh, up and through this area. Here's Snowball Earth, the thing that may have created the uh, giant um, uh, great unconformity, that, the giant unconformity that spans all of Earth. Uh, so that's where that kind of fits in. Um, you know, this just simple organism, stuff starting to move onto land, amphibians, reptiles starting to, to come onto land. Um, the uh, blue represents different glacial, uh, glacial periods. So this is still up until about 251 million years ago. The top half of that scale, uh, dinosaurs coming in. Now we have the first birds, the first flowers. The first flowers didn't even happen until uh, 130, 120 million years ago. Um, the KT extinction, 65% of all species went extinct. Um, that's just a number of different extinctions. Um, that's when the dinosaurs went extinct. More on that. More on that later. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, Homo sapiens coming in right here at the kind of at the end. So all the different red, those are different mass extinctions. As you can see, there's been a, a, a lot of them. A lot of them. So in any case, there's a lot of stuff that happened in the past 4.5 for a billion years. There, there's a lot of stuff that occurred. Um, you know, Earth's old. Earth is really, really old. Most of, you know, when we think old, you know, most people think, oh, you know, thousand, a few thousand years old. 
That's nothing compared to Earth. That's nothing compared to the age of the Earth. So, how old is the Earth? I've said it a number of times. I've, I've said it in past units as well. But also, how do we know? You're just going to take my word for it? Reminder that the Earth is 4.54 billion years old, and here's how we know. Let's look at the historic uh, attempts at dating Earth, absolute dating Earth. So, starting back in 1715, Sir Edmund Haley, famous uh, for uh, Haley's Comet. Uh, Sir Edmund Haley, so 1715, so 300 years ago, suggested calculating the age of the Earth based on the rate of uh, accumulation of salt in the sea. So he thought that salt was somehow eroding from, from the land, and rivers would bring that salt material to uh, the sea, and based on how much salt has built up in the ocean, we can figure out how old the Earth is. Well, it didn't really work out, but he suggested it. So he, he was like kind of one of the first to kind of really throw something out there of, of somehow, some way to uh, date the Earth. Charles Darwin, 1859, believed uh, evolution was a very slow process. So his theory of evolution, highest level of knowing. Therefore, for what he saw, which was based on fossils, based on the fossil record. That's how we put together the theory of evolution. Earth had to be at least 300 million years old, at least, because that's what he saw. And that's not too bad, because for most fossils in the living, that most fossils of material that was living occurred within the past 541 million years. He didn't really know that there was all this other Earth uh, older than 541 million years with ancient life, microscopic, single-celled bacteria. So... Pretty good for what he had. Uh, Lord Kelvin, if you've taken any chemistry, the Kelvin scale, that's his namesake, uh, in 1862 used the law of thermodynamics to calculate the length of time needed for Earth to cool to a solid body. So he figured out what Earth is made of. Thermodynamics is a study of things heating and cooling. If you can kind of get an approximation of what Earth is made out of and then how big it is, you can figure out how long it would take for, for the Earth to cool. Now, he was off. He was way off. But he, at least he was the first to kind of put some data-driven science behind it. Again, uh, Haley, Haley just suggested this whole thing. Darwin just kind of threw an estimate out there based on how slow ev evolution was. Kelvin was the first to kind of mathematically kind of work it out to say 20 million years. Again, that's far off of uh, 4.54 billion but the first to really start to put science and math behind it, even though his science was a little, little flawed. But now this is still much, much older than what we have known or what humanity thought they knew of the age of the Earth, just being a few thousand years old based on a religious text. Uh, John Jolly in 1899 went back to what Haley kind of was talking about and um, used his approach to derive 90 million years as the age of the Earth. So again, still far from 4.5 billion, but, but at least we're putting bigger numbers on it. It's not just a few thousand or even a hundred thousand. We're in the 90 millions. So how did we get all the way from, from 90 million to 4.54 billion? Well, along came something in 1905 called radiome radiometric dating. Ooh. Imagine you have a, a rock of, a piece of granite rock. This is an igneous rock. Contained in most things uh, are small amounts, very, 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 very small amounts of some radioactive material. So let's say this granite rock has a very, very, very small amount of uranium which it, most samples very might well. Um, uranium is radioactive, so it spontaneously decays, radioactive decay, it spontaneously decays, breaks down, and turns into something else. It changes, it, it morphs into something else. In this case, uranium, which is the parent uh, 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 atom, eventually uh, morphs and changes into its daughter product, lead. Um, so we have the original parent iso parent atom, or the isotope, um, changing, evolving into its daughter product, daughter atom, in this case, lead. And if we can figure out how long it takes uranium to do that, count how much uranium is 
in a particular sample or should be in a particular sample, but then see how much uranium has actually decayed to lead over time, then we can figure out a, a pretty precise age. So when rocks are dated, the amount of parent atoms is compared to the amount of daughter isotopes. So we have the uranium, in this case, of the parents, they decay, change, and become daughter products, daughter atoms, in this case, lead. And this involves something called, uh, measuring it involves something called half-life. So imagine we have a sample um, and it's all uranium, all these parent isotopes. Well, after one half-life, half of the uranium has now changed to the daughter product, lead. So it's half and half. After another half-life, so two half-lives, half of what's left decays to the daughter product. So initially we start out with one, two, three, four, so we're 32, uh, 32 uranium atoms. After one half-life, we have 16 uranium, 16 lead. After two half-lives, so it takes those 16 uranium divided in half again, so now I have 8 uranium and 24 lead daughter product atoms. So that's half-lives. That's how we measure radioactive uh, material. Now, um, what we do with that is we actually know the time, the half-lives of uh, radioactive material. A little chemistry, a little physics involved, but we know the, the time it takes for um, half of uranium, in this case, to decay, to turn to lead. And there are a number of different radioactive isotopes that we can use. So you have the parent isotope as it decreases in amount, and the daughter product increases in amount, to where after 10 half-lives is almost the majority of daughter product. So again, we, we know these half-lives. So uranium-235 has a half-life of 0 .7, uh, 0.704 billion years. Um, so there's a couple of different isotopes of uranium. We can use potassium, rubidium, samarium, thorium, rhenium, lutetium, um, and then they decay into these different things. So depending on what we're dating and how, how accurate we need to be, different processes, we can use different radiometric uh, uh, isotopes, radioactive isotopes, different parents, counting them versus how many of the daughter product. U-235 is just a very, very common one to use. But so is potassium, which uh, decays to argon. Um, thorium also decays into lead. So just depending on what we're looking at, how accurate you want to be, you can choose different parents. So for example, U-235. So if I'm looking at a rock sample and it's gone through one half-life, meaning half the material is uranium, half is lead, if it's exactly 50-50, then this rock is 0 0.704 billion years old. If the, it's gone through two half-lives, then the rock's 1.4 billion years old. If it's gone through three half-lives, 2.1 billion years old, etc. Four half-lives, 2.86. Five half-lives, 3.52 billion years old. So I just kind of keep adding a half-life depending on the ratio of parent isotopes to daughter isotopes. To do that, we got to use super fancy expensive equipment. Um, we don't have that for our class. That's why something like radiometric dating is something we don't typically talk about. We talk a, a lot about relative age dating, this compared to that. We'll use geologic ages a lot, but actually specific absolute ages, um, kind of few and far between. Few and far between. So if this is the case, if we can use radiometric dating to figure out the age of the Earth, then we need to find the oldest rocks, because the oldest rocks will help us infer how old the Earth is, hopefully. So where can we find these old rocks? Well, that's what we'll find out when we come back. I'll see you back here in just a second.